from the Kumi Uchi position, I need this leg forward. So if for some reason that leg is not forward, I'm either going to do a 45 push or I can do a strong side pull, either way, just to get him to step. Your basic movement is that your outside leg, your ankle needs to be at or past his ankle. Inside leg just sweeps. And if you turn your body just a little bit, it'll clear him, bring him down much easier. If you don't get that one, a good little follow-up that you can start to play with is you just plant the leg. And essentially it's a Tayatosh from behind, but from back here, it's Koshigake, and then you just turn your whole body and you're right back into position. Okay, so the next uh, throw in the series is Ganseki, uh, Ganseki Atosh, Ganseki Nage, Ganseki Arai, uh, Ganseki Uchimata. You can really take any of your Koshinage variations and you can, with a slight modification, uh, use this Ganseki approach. Ganseki means throwing the big rock. Typically, it's going to be someone whose shoulders are at about the same height as yours or your uh, a little shorter than the person that you're trying to get to. So if I can use Thor real quick. I want my shoulders, essentially my arm into his armpit for this. The danger is um, I don't want his arm to come over the top and I don't want to be so close in on his bicep that I end up getting choked. Okay, so I need to find where's the appropriate place that I can keep control of his arm. For the basic Atosh, I come across, see how he's off balance, and then as I turn, I can just let him fall out. Now I'm free to use the other hand. I was just showing the strictest version right there. So if I'm in here and I've got a closer grip and I pull in and I come into this position, I can either step across and do the Tayatosh, or in this case, the Ganseki Atosh, just like we've already practiced earlier. I can hip in and bring him up over the top, just like our normal Koshinage. I can come to the far side for more of a Harai, or depending on my orientation, I can go for a Uchimara on this side, or I could do like a Koichigari on this side. Really the only difference between this and your Koshinage series is you're specifically using that underhook. One last thing to think about here is a good way to test your position is once you get set up, can you just kind of do an imaginary high five and affect their balance? If you can't, then you're either too far out or they're too upright and you're probably twisted a little bit. Okay, to our Daish, there's um, some historical ways that Tuar Gaish has been done that has kind of morphed a little bit over time. So you will see some very different versions of it as it was taught in Judo in the 1950s up until where we're at today. What we're looking at is, uh, let's say uh, they, they punch and we frame and we're kind of in here and this is where we typically practice our Tawara Gai. So I've got a little bit of kind of an underhook here with a little bit of downward pressure. Your fundamental from this position to our Gaish is going to be to provide downward pressure to turn around the person and to hang on to the arm the whole time. Depending on how you get into position though, if you're more kind of in close, as I put downward pressure, I can just take his head, can take his head and stuff it between his knees. That is also a version. So I come here, and now I'm in uh, another version of Tuar Gaish. 
either one of those work. The important thing here is that as the head goes down, another version is I can push his head back this way and keep control of the arm. So I'm driving the head down and I'm kind of snaking the arm from that underhook position. And that's the fundamental piece to the Tuaregait. Okay, Tayatosh. Tayatosh, you have a lot of different anchor positions that you can use. You could start off with a Kumiyochi type, type grip. You could do the inside top grip. You could do the back, the belt, the shoulder, any of these. This is pretty versatile. But when you get into position, the important part here is I want my, I want his far leg to be angled out just a little bit to give me enough room to, to step across. And then whichever position I, I want to use to, to close the distance is fine. I need my ankle slightly on the outside. If it's touching his foot, that's, that's fine. What I don't want is a bent knee with him falling and we both fall on my knee that, that doesn't want to go that direction. So I lock the knee and then I just bring them around and you can bring them around as nicely or unnicely as you want. But for your Tayotosh, you're right here, it's easy to put them on the ground, they're right here in front of you, easy to follow up. You got enough space, you can probably make that work. Boom, front, shut out. Oh, pretty safe. Yeah. 